Hey, Amy. Hello. How are Hi, you? Hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty, pretty good. It was a bit yeah. of a hectic morning, but pretty good. I was looking forward to this, looking forward to virtually seeing everybody. <laughs> it's it's really now really a part of my routine. I look forward to to this. Uh, it's fun. a highlight, right? Yes. Love it. Hello, everyone. I hope you look forward to it too, you guys. Yeah. We're working hard every week to try to bring you great stuff. Let's do a little roll call. Yeah, look at how many of them are already on here this morning. Hello, Jennifer, Donna, hello. I see Lorraine made it and Ira, and I'm pretty sure I saw Allison. Diana, I have three. Hello, Sandy, oh, Lorraine, Hi, hello, Lady. Ira. She made it from South Africa today. Hello, 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 hey, Shirley. And Jennifer's here. Allison, Allison yeah, Allison made it. Now the real the the is real going. Trip. I'm trying to click, and then there's a new one. Hello, <laughs> Alyssa. Hey, Alyssa. Hello, June. Welcome, everyone. Okay. Well, hello, um, hello, hello, everybody. So excited to have you all with us today. So we are going to be. Um, something interesting happened while I was preparing life happened <laughs> and I screwed up because that's what happens sometimes we screw up so I'm gonna kind of roll with it and show you guys that you just gotta roll with it and life goes on ah oh, so Jeremy let's... made it look who made it Jeremy oh, hello hello there's just uh, so many Facebook, of us. I'm seeing a lot of Facebook comments. I think Facebook is all good. I'm yeah, seeing people so watching. Too. Facebook seems fine. Maybe it's um. Uh, no, there it's yours. working. Okay, so let's just um quickly. I wanted to mention, and sorry, Amy, I didn't uh, remember to tell you because I was running. But I just wanted to mention for those of you that aren't aware, mm -hmm. we've been live streaming for several weeks, and there's a lot of videos in the playlist. So I added the playlist link. If you guys want to watch some of the old videos, I mean, it's still relevant stuff. It's all great information. So if you want to check out our past uh, videos with the all the great stuff that we did, you can check those out. They're available both on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, some of those live stream thumbnails are with Amy. Some are with Han and Amber. But you'll, you'll catch uh, you know both, and it's a lot of great information. And I want to thank everybody that's donating on uh, coffee. I have the ticker there running at the bottom. Thank you to everybody who donates. It's uh, the you get the supply list for free. If anybody yeah. wants to know what we're using today, where to find us, get a lot of questions. Where do you get this? Where do you get that? So you can go download that. And then um, the templates are two dollars for today's project. So if you want to support us, here's some of the stuff I have listed in my shop. I added a cookie tutorial for a purse. So if you guys oh, want to check that out, that's a great Mother's they're Day. They're asking to see that cookie behind you. They can see them on your um, on your cabinet back there. Here, let's, which one do I bring? The, the Chihuahua? I love the Chihuahua. Please bring the puppy. There. Isn't that okay. beautiful? Hi, Joseph. Thank so you for joining us. He's ready to go for a little ride. So you can customize your little 3D purse to, uh, here's a picture of them all. You can customize them to suit whoever you're gifting it to. Maybe it's for your Mother's Day gift or, um, you know. Mom, be I better tell them where I am because they're worried I got kidnapped. So well, maybe you did. <laughs> No, I'm totally okay. I'm just broadcasting from the house and I haven't had it. I'm in my cookie room. I have a cookie studio now so I can work late at night when it, it strikes me. Um, and I don't have the back wall decorated yet. So <laughs> it's I'm coming. It's go, coming. So funny. I tried to go to the not to go to the shop on Monday and Tuesday so that I can just dedicate those to creative days to keep yeah, it going. Yeah, you don't have to go to like work is, yes, uh, is a good right. day. Like exactly. I'm, I'm fully dressed today, but I could see this would be so tempting to be in like PJs, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but absolutely. I'll get the wall decorated soon, so it'll look cuter for you guys. So the purse, mine is about six inches wide, but obviously if you're making it, you can make them the size you want, you know? That's what a great thing. Like, they're, 
they're loving the purses. And you guys, well, if you're in the cookie school, that whole project is up on the cookie school. She's got videos for everything. The templates are in there. It's amazing. But if you don't oh, want to sign you. up, it's in, the, it's in the coffee too. I put it there for those of you that maybe aren't, you know, it's up in to you. School. I'm trying you to. Know, Mar, I love the coffee. I love it. I love that we're doing this. It's making it so easy for people. Yes. And, uh, and it's making it kind of, um, just, you know, it takes a lot of time. So we have to be able to justify the investment of time, right? Yes, but I, I really, you've really encouraged me. So I'll encourage everyone else and pass it on. It's worth spending the time to get the technology down. Totally worth it to get all this done and to learn how to do it because it makes it so easy when you need something. Jeremy's very worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm 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 good, but I'm gonna decorate that wall because I see it's very um what colors it show up on your screen, Mar? Kind of like a light green. Yeah, it's a margolin baston green from Hallmark, you know that Dutch artist. So okay. that, that's what I it is. I'm but I mean it looks it looks kind <laughs> of green. So do I jump into it just to show? Okay, so this here, this is yeah. a project I did. Let's be on many moons ago, so long ago, I don't remember. I want to say, you know, uh, 20, like 10 or 12, maybe, I don't know, back a long time ago. It was for a cookie swap. And it really, when I published it, it was like one of the most kind of positive reactions I ever got on a cookie. People were um, very, liked it a lot. And so I, um, I, uh, made a tutorial years later based on that cookie. And so today we're gonna look at this project. So I switched it up a little bit. I didn't wanna replicate it exactly. And so if you, just to look look at it carefully, this is a great project if you're a beginner because if you look at it, there's a lot of reference points to know where to pipe, okay? And I make it with royal icing transfers. So it's one of those projects that's great. And so one of the things I always say if you're using a template with royal icing transfers is to double check your template with your cookie cutter before you start. So let me just do the little camera dance here. Hey, Mar, before you start, would you get tell them there's it looks like there's maybe half a dozen new people on with us that don't understand what the coffee is. So do you oh, coffee. Mm -hmm. We have the, the, the link is uh, in the ticker there at the bottom, if you see it. And, and um, that's our, um, so this is, uh, this is my link. And then if you see the end, that's Montreal Confection. So it's co coffee, Montreal, and then the slash Montreal Confections. And this is Amy's. And there you can purchase our templates and you can um, basically support the live stream since it's not, it doesn't run ads. And so it's just to help us be able to uh, monetize and, you know, pay for our expenses and the streaming platform and all that. So it's, and we're loving you enjoy this it, it's a way to support our efforts. Yeah. Mar found this one and all of the money that you guys either shop with or donate to come straight to whatever artist you're purchasing or donating to. So we're putting up weekly supply lists. Um, they're free or a donation for them. We're putting up templates for sale. And for a full 24 hours after we um, do our class, you can purchase them at discounted prices. That, that about yes. cover it. What did you, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you okay. missed the live stream or you kind of walk in halfway through, you can watch it when it's done. We load it and you can rewatch it. So yeah, th those stay for free, right? Everybody that's participating with you, all of that's up for free. Yes. All, all the playlists. Yes, yes. Mar, so that's here's beautiful. my cookie cutter. So I don't know, for those of you that make cookies, you might know a company called uh, Copper Gifts. And I just noticed, I think the pandemic finished them. Oh, so they're no. closed. And so I used to design, uh, do decorating for them for their website. And so I have a ton of copper which I love, I love copper cookie cutters. And so this design was made with this um, cookie cutter. And so one of the things I always say is when you make your is to double check the size mm -hmm. to make sure that when you're making your transfers, they're actually gonna fit when they're done. And so I, I was running a little bit yesterday trying to get everything ready and I 
forgot to check one other thing, make it on the right side. So I made my transfers backwards. So I was a little bummed when I finally realized I made this mistake this morning and it's too late to repipe them because uh, Royal Icing transfers have to dry overnight. So we're going to figure it out. So that's what, um, that's what happened. So yeah, c'est la vie, things like I that. I love it when you show us real life stuff. That's, well, I mean, that's, it's, real, it's, that's really fun when you're actually working on something and you fix it. So these are, are made, but I'm going to do one to show you guys. So when you're making a royal icing transfer, you're basically, it's exactly like decorating a cookie, but you're working on a, a piece of material that will release so that you can take it off. So you can work in advance and add the dry element. So it's a great thing if you are one of these people that maybe is a hobby baker and doesn't have a whole lot of time, right? It's not you know, and this is a great way to break up the project. You could do a few one night, a few more the other night. You don't have to sit down and do a hundred. You can do 10 a night, let's say. You can make them with your leftover icing. So I decided the original was a bit different. Here's the picture again. I had done the leaves purple and green. So now they're green and green. I just switched it up a little bit. I figured I'd, so you're just basically tracing which is so easy if some of you maybe not super you know like there's different skills you know some people are really good at drawing other people are very good technically like they can replicate something really well royal icing transfers even if you're a great artist this is a you know if you want everything to look the same and be exactly the right shape that it needs to be this is a great technique because even if you're super great at drawing, you know, things vary from one to the other. That's such a beautiful design. Paisleys and peacocks is something that I think just people really like. So Mar, I told you originally I was gonna try to make um, oh, yes, yes, some, yes, some specialty peacock feathers for today. Yeah. So I, I too am going to show you an experiment that failed. Before I said yeah, what I, <laughs> an experiment that went rogue. So I know something else I can use it for. Um, and someone is asking if they can, if you have those copper cutters linked on your um, site. No, because they went bankrupt <laughs> or they closed. I don't know that they went bankrupt. That's not the right. Uh, they just, they're no longer in business. I don't know what the situation is, but their site is no longer there. I gotcha. So you're going to have to look for an alternative uh paisley shape. And now I'm immediately grabbing this kind of electric green. And so the thing about royal icing transfers is if you're working in a super runny icing, well, there's not a lot of, um, I want to say like backbone left in it, you know, it's all water. Mm -hmm. right. And so they'll tend to dry very, very flat. So you want to try to work on with an icing. I don't want to say thick, but you know, the more thick you can go and still have it heal, the better. Mm -hmm. If you don't want a, a, a super flat pancake, if you want something that's gonna give you a little bit of relief on top of the, um, of the design, you know, you don't want it to dry. Like, And also when they're super thin, they're that much more fragile. Mm -hmm. So that's there it is. And then so I Amy, did- Marlon will put up a link later for you for directly to the cookie school, okay? but there's tons and tons of information in there. I think that, well, it, it's, uh, there it is. So just there come it up. Is, Patreon. Okay. Com, Montreal Confections. That's it. And so I cut the template and I made the flower there. So the thing about this particular flower, if you look at it, it's not like perfectly right from the top, all the same size. It's a little bit like it's curved underneath. And right. so I did make it in advance and I filmed the video just to show you guys. So here it is. So I made the little royal icing transfer middles, coated them in sanding sugar, and I had those made in advance and I decided to paint them gold. So that was me just painting them gold. And when I'm making the flower, I'm using a petal tip, but contrary to everything like that we normally do, we use the narrow edge out. I'm using the fat edge out to get a better fuse against oh. the leaves. Because That's if I was so to the narrow edge out, chances are it wouldn't connect right. to well, the that, leaves. That's a nice solid transfer by the time you have all of that connected like that. 
yeah, like it's it's giving it enough, like just you need the fuse to happen or else they'll just separate. And then I'm sculpting it a little bit because the icing is on the thick side. So it allows for a bit of sculpting. And so here you can kind of peel it off. And mm -hmm. so you can just squish it in there. And then this is all going to dry and become one thing. So you can pipe them right on the sheet or you can yeah. make them in it like, you know, on a, on a flower nail and have them kind of, you know, in steps, like I say, this is the other version. I did try it with the narrow edge out and I really didn't like it. I don't know if you can kind of see, you see it. it looks. Oh, it I see what you're saying. I really like it with the thicker edge out too. Yeah, it, I don't know, it just didn't look as nice. So then this is, I'm gonna move it because I obviously can't use this right now. So here it is, dry overnight. I tried to put, uh, I had some green glitter and I'm trying to get it in frame here. And what happened with the green glitter is it's not ugly, but if you're planning on piping on top, it's going to make it difficult for you to pipe really clean lines. So you yeah, want to have th this template is in the shop for sure, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you say the size of that Paisley cutter earlier? Would you say that was a four inch? Oh, this is four and a half, almost a half. five inches tall. And um, the Ann Clark, I think, has one, but hers is only three inches, which is fine. You just have to adjust, right. but it's going to be more difficult to do the details. And isn't that beautiful? Um, that's just a perfect shape. It's kind of like your candy corn. It's useful. Yes for any yes. to do platters that's a great platter cutter i like i like the well you see it here how it's all in the picture right you see yeah. it like they all nest together <laughs> they're worried that i've infected you with the glitter bug but i think you did it to me <laughs> <laughs> so here these have dried i made them yesterday and you just gently so i like to work on a, actually like an acetate type mm -hmm. thing because if you look at the back Nice wax and paper and, and parchment paper is fine but this it dries completely flat there is no buckling that happens because wax paper and parchment paper well it absorbs the water and it becomes a little wrinkly right and so this will allow you to even like use this side to be the front you know it's beautiful so it's like perfect so let's just Hi, olga we're glad you made it so I'm going to pull out, oh, this is the other thing I wanted to show you guys. Let's talk about transferring a template on a jet black cookie. So I was going to show you guys that. So here's my cookie. This is um, dark because of the cocoa. You can use, you know, store brand cocoa, but the quality of, of your ingredients will determine the taste of your cookie. You know, if it's going to taste more chocolatey, right? Mm -hmm for sure. So here, there's two ways to do it. So if you don't have, my lights are flickering. So uh -oh. if you don't have- You're not having um, a form, are you? No, not okay. at all. So if you don't have a silhouette, this shape here is a, is a shape that is pretty easy to do with scissors, right? And so mm -hmm. this one here, you can just lay the cardstock down on the chocolate cookie. And mm -hmm. I've got here gold airbrush. And so the gold on the chocolate cookie looks really nice. So pretty, Mar. This cookie's gorgeous. And so it really goes with the design. And so when I remove this, I automatically have my guidelines. That's so and so pretty. it's kind of like a, a shielding to, to, to add your guidelines easily. So that's one way. Okay. And then we're going to do it the other way with the stencil. So here it is. So this is uh, formatted for that for that shape. So you might have to tweak that if you cut your own stencil. And the stencil is a little bit fancier than my template. I wanted it, since it was going to be a stencil, to be a little bit more kind of um, fancy-ish, you know? So, so I'm just kidding. using regular Wilton food color that you'd use to whiten your icing. I have to say, I really do like it to airbrush, but boy, oh boy, the bottle's always yucky. The are, What are you using? Airbrush? White Wilton no, airbrush? Just, well, Wilton, like the stuff that you use to whiten your um, buttercream. Okay. 
And now I'm using that and you might need to put some water in it. Just a, a, like when I say water, I mean like a speck of water because it's already pretty runny stuff. Um, Mar, in, in your, on your page or site, you have a link for the, maten the material for the stencils, right? Yeah. Okay. Is it working? All right. So now I'm able to come in with this. And you don't have to do the whole thing. You're just doing your perimeter lines. And there's your guidelines, you see? So oh, you're able wow. to add your guidelines on a chocolate cookie just like you would on a regular mm -hmm. cookie. You just have to use a different color to get it on. So those are your two options. If obviously, Mar, when you're saying the white that you use to lighten your icing, you're not talking about white food gel, right? Yeah, I, I'll get the, a newer bottle. Hold on. So you're just thinning it down and running it through the airbrush? It's called white, white icing color. Okay. I didn't have that in my supplies because I didn't even think about it. But it's like stuff that you, it, it, to, to make, you know, buttercream because of the butter. Okay. And that's what I use. It's the only thing that gives adequate coverage. But it's already thinned? They don't have yeah, to do anything? Okay. No. It's really pretty runny. It's like it's uh, surprisingly runny. Okay. So the the color, I decided to switch the color. So I'm going to do the one with the more information for myself. Here, I'm grabbing purple. So as you can see, everything is there. The smaller you cut the stencil, the less detail is, is you know, going to show up because the machine can't cut a hairline opening on your uh, right. stencil, right? Right. So you want to answer a question that. real quick for somebody. Somebody bought your template. Um, they purchased a cup of coffee, but couldn't open it on the iPad. Okay, so when you go into coffee, guys, there's a place to make straight out donations, which is where you're buying a cookie cutter or tea or coffee, whatever we have it worded as. But then there's a shop where those items are discounted while we're on live. And then 24 hours later, they go up to full price. So in the shop, if you purchase through the shop, you can make whatever donation level you want to because it's set for a a certain price and then it says or or um, what you would like to give so do your donations through there if you want the templates because then you automatically get an email with a pdf file to download everything for today from marlin on That's her it. site and then same thing on my site whatever you purchase as long as you do it through the shop you can do a donation combined with that if you want to put in a little bit more whatever you guys want to do but if you do it through the shop it's going to be automatic. And for the per person that just purchased that didn't get the download because you bought a coffee, I'm sure if they mess if you message Marsh, she'll take care of that for you. She'll just have to get an email, right? Yeah. But there there are two places because some people just want to donate to help us keep live streaming. Um, and I know I love her haircut too. Jeremy loves your haircut. Um, some people Thank just want to donate, but some people want to have the supply list and the downloads and the template files and all that. So either either way is great, and we appreciate everything you guys are doing. It, it's made such a difference in the last couple of weeks. Um, Mar, if I made the template the wrong way around, can't I flip the cookie? It sounds just like the type of thing I'd do. Well, you just have to bake the cookie the right, right? You just have to flip the cookie before you bake it. So you just have to kind of pay attention to, so the stencil, there's no wrong side to the stencil because you can use it either way. It's the cookie that you have to bake the right side, right? Right. So you and either have it angled to the right or to the left. Yeah. And so, so now your, your template's in black ink. So on white paper, you should be able to flip that over and still see it to do your piping. So you should be able to do that either way. Yeah, as well. exactly. Exactly. Just, I just mean, this happens in real life. Sometimes you just get going really fast. Exactly. Um, That's why I said, well, it. so normally you see this would go like this on it. Let me just flip it so you guys can see. So this is meant to go see like that. Well, it's not going to work because I did it backwards by mistake. So, so now I could have decorated the back of the cookie. That was the other fix that I could have done. I could have decorated the back of the cookie, but I'm trying to just show you guys that, you know, sometimes we just roll with it. Though? That's a beautiful accident. Yeah, it fits. And it's some accidents are a big bobo a big mistake and other times it's not so bad this is one of those it's not so bad and you can see it's fitting um you know pretty well pretty i love well. it Mar, that's actually gorgeous 
I bet if you, you pull combine. a finished one and you can see once you've got it all embellished, it's mm. fine, you know? It's beautiful. So let me just show something quickly. And the other thing too, if you don't, you know, if you have a stencil cutting machine, as you know, you can cut as many as you want. And this I thought would make a really great paint to cookie for adults, you know, because yes. oh, it, adults it? Love it as much as the kids. And this is one of those designs that's just fun. You know, there's a lot of stuff to do and you'd want to cut your stencil a little bit smaller because when you have the base icing here, it's rounded. And so if you right. get really close to the edge, you don't get a really nice stenciling, right? It's better to be a little bit more on the inside, mm -hmm. but see? But look I mean, how, so guys, she just told you a couple of things. That's a great fast, right? So that's Amy. something you could do fast for the shop, but also you could turn that into a, P, a PYO. And then you can go to the intermediate or advanced level by just looking at the cookie on the left and the cookie on the right. Like the cookie on the left without the extra detailing is, is a beautiful cookie. So we're going to finish it off. I'll try to go as fast as I possibly can. <laughs> uh, don't rush. They're prepared to stay. They're taking their lunch break, literally. They're not working on cookies right now. <laughs> so this is yellow. You can come in and paint, but I mean... The thing is, is if you start painting all these lines, you have to be very meticulous to not get the gold on the other areas. Right. But it's entirely up to you if it's something that you kind of want to do. So I'm just drawing the beak and I'm trying to do it as all one thing so that I don't get a de like an outline on my beak. I want it to be kind of like the same look as the, the rest of my peacock. And when you're working, this is a PME, the small 1.5. You don't want to have a super stiff icing. You're going to kill your hand. So you want an icing that's like even like 20 seconds. Because it's coming out of such a small hole, you don't have to worry about it spreading really. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. Jeremy loves this one too. He said this went exactly as I intended. I'm amazing and flawless. He's saying that's you. <laughs> we all <laughs> Well, the thing is, is the customer or your whoever's receiving it doesn't know that you made a boo-boo and they don't need to know. You don't have to say the, you know, when you screw up, they don't need to know. You don't need to say, oh, well, you know, I messed up. They don't need to know that. And I'm going to help Karen really quick with something. Guys, yeah. stencils run, it literally stencils run anywhere from five to $15, depending on if they're single level or uh, doubles or triplicate, like you're doing multi layers. So if you just take the cost of like, what was that one that you put up last week? The um, silhouette portrait was around $200. Yeah. You know, uh, less than 20 stencils and you've paid for that. You've paid for the machine. So you know, you, I'll be an enabler for a minute and just tell you if stencils are something you're using and you're making money with them because you're running a business, then it's definitely worth the time. Plus the other thing it opens up for you is you can do all kinds of custom things for business orders, realtors, corporations, you know, anything like that that's around you. So Whoa, like huh, I'm sorry. School, like in the States, mm -hmm. everybody has their schools, you know? Yes. Like all it's, the logos for the teams. Yeah, it's really a valuable skill to add eventually. Like if you're just starting, don't freak out and think you have to do that right away. But honestly, I'm just being a complete enabler here. You really will make money with that. And this, this design, what I love about this design is, like I said before, there's a lot of information just with the transfer. So you see here, I know where the center of my leaves are. And so I'm able to come in and add those lines to the center. And then I'm able to come in and do the outer line. So there's just all these reference points that you can kind of look at and say, okay, now I go back and do here. And you can add the details to these like on the transfers before. So then it's done on the transfer and you can um, not worry about having a deadline, right? You start them in advance and you can have right. them ready to go. Like if you want to make this for Thursday, you could start literally now. Right. And have them ready. 
and it wouldn't affect the freshness of your cookie by having all this done ahead of time because it's just the icing. Sally is just amazed that you can pipe like that under camera knowing other people are watching you live. Yeah. It's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, Maxine is agreeing. Best thing she did was learn to make her own stencils. Here's the thing, though. You don't have to start out designing them right away because Marlon is doing the digital download where you just have to figure out how to download the file and put it in your silhouette or whatever software. I don't know the names of all of them because I have not, um, I don't have the room to break mine out again yet. And I'm considering switching to silhouette from Cricut. Um, so I'm still investigating right now, but all of that's already laid out and everything that you're getting each week, like you're ready to just load your material, your mat and go. So bigger, bigger thing is just to watch some YouTube videos and figure out how to, um, you know, use your machine and then you're good to go. She's got everything designed for you and sized. That's what's so nice about all these projects. Everything's ready to roll. Well, that's it. I mean, everybody has, um, like if you if you like to design your own stuff, the thing is, is I try to design my projects to give you the skills to then go and do that if you want, if you're so inclined to design yourself, or you can replicate mine, you know, it's entirely up to you. So here it is kind of altered, right? Because I had to go. Um, Terry, don't feel inadequate, just keep practicing. That's That's what we're trying to do is just encourage you guys to, keep making more cookies. You'll be so shocked in a year how different your designs are in your decorating level. So here you can see the other one. I did, this is the back of the cookie, so I just wanted to see it. Mar, your happy accident, two of those cookies together like that actually looks like lovebirds. That'd be a great wedding set. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. But here you can not see it as much, but you can see I'm using the perforated mat on the back and so you see it's all got a checker checkerboard here so my son was excited when he saw them because he knows when it's chocolate cookies he's actually going to get to eat them because the cocoa is so expensive i don't make um the cookies to go in the in the garbage you know i had made i had made a batch of the dough last week remember i made these and so then i had made this here with the, that same batch of dough I really liked Friday's cookies too. The ones you just showed, the that was the cherry tree blossoms, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful. And what a creative cookie. How pretty that's going to be on a platter. So this is just one of those designs that I want to say is like timeless. You know, it's like one of those that you can pull out for an anniversary party, for a birthday, for, you know, there's just mm -hmm. so many occasions. And if you're, you know, you like to make stuff for your mom, because I know moms are really tough to kind of buy for but they you know if you've taken the time to make something thoughtful they appreciate that even as adults like when their kids are adults i mean yeah so yeah again because of all the information here the leaf i can see well that's you know there's three lines going over this leaf three lines the edge it's one of those cookies that's just you're basically like just adding to it. You get to, oh, I'm going to put a little scallop border. I'm going to put a few dots. It's like you can do all kinds of little additions to it. Here, I wanted to add actually to the to the little flower. You can do like extra dots coming from the center. Mar, in today's supply list, did you tell them which cocoa you used? Was yes, I did. Oh, no. Okay. the Did I put it in that? I put it in the chocolate cookie recipe. Because I have my chocolate cookie recipe in the coffee uh, listing too. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's in it's definitely there. It's in the chocolate cookie recipe. And then, oh, I like it. I like it with the dots. I do too. It looks it looks like the little flower stamens, right? So pretty. Yeah. Looks beautiful. And I love um, the piping that you're doing, the circular piping around the the head and the eye. It's a beautiful pattern. See here, it's a little bit trickier to, to go. I have to stop because of this. And you have to kind of play, like if the design right now, I'm the right way, so it's not allowing mm -hmm. me to do certain things. So you just have to kind of wing it. But it's- Junis is saying definitely your chocolate cookie recipe is a must have. If you like chocolate, mm -hmm. it was uh, that was the chocolate recipe I made when I was on the Christmas cookie challenge. And I, I mean, 
they they liked it. The thing is, is I've rarely seen them ever say that they hate a cookie. <laughs> I don't know how truthful it was, but they they reacted well. Was that like so, such a stressful experience or did you love it and you're glad you did it? You know, it I have to tell you, it was very stressful. I almost had a mental breakdown leading up to it. You know, like not so much when you're there, but mm -hmm. like going to Christmas Cookie Challenge as I was going there, I was actually teaching at a convention 50 people, and I seriously was having a mental breakdown at the convention, because I knew I was flying from there to California. And uh, yeah, it was a very, very, very stressful, like before, mm -hmm. when you're there and you're in the heat of it, it's like, it's like a, you're, you know, you just have to cope. The before. You were in your groove once you got there though, right? You could just keep rolling. Yeah, that's it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not so bad under pressure, but it's like just the before it's like almost like execution day <gasps> yes oh my god i guess that's so much to keep upstairs right you're teaching and then you've got to fly and deal with the airport and all that and then you're yeah, yeah, I did and it. I'm so glad that i did it because really we never know when we're going to get another opportunity right and so if you're presented with an opportunity and you're hesitant for for to do it <laughs> well you never know if you're going to get another opportunity, hence we've been locked in our houses for a year. So, right. You, know, we just here. Find, Hello. you just jump into the deep end. Hi, was, Fabiola. It's not something I ever thought I'd do. Hi, Fabiola. I saw the episode. I watched that whole season, but I watched the whole season just to get your episode and I loved it. Oh, thank you. I loved it. It was so much fun. And I think I watched it in August when it was super, super hot outside. So I was channeling oh, yeah. my inner Christmas. <laughs> this one here, I like this leaf with the swirls. Swirls are mm -hmm. fun to make in royal icing. Let's see. I'm trying to um, hit all the comments so you won't have to go back up. And... This one here, I find as much as it was a mistake, the other one, the scallops seem to have more room to to, to sit on the yeah. other version. You've had at least a half a dozen comments where people are saying they actually like it flipped like that. Yeah, it's one of those happy accidents, mm -hmm. eh? Yes, absolutely. So there they are together. There. Gorgeous. Look at that. I love it. What a wedding set that would be. And I have had requests for quotes recently for um, peacock cupcakes and oh. peacock wedding cake with cupcakes coming down to make the tail. So uh, this must be something that's coming back, coming back around again. Here's the other color. You Look see the head was um, teal yeah. and the body was um, the, the electric green. It's a little bit different and the and the flower was flat this one is like a puffy mm -hmm. so i kind of oh, this see i kind of like the puffy flower anyway it's just a slightly love different it. version so that's uh, it Mar, what season were you on three you it was the season premiere of um of christmas the cookie three. challenge right yeah the christmas cookie challenge <laughs> so your canadian a <laughs> that's it that's well, it, dude. I had done uh, nature for tribute to Canada. That's yeah, it was beautiful too. If you guys didn't get to see her cookie garland in that episode, you should just watch it just for that. Those are so beautiful. Well, thank you very they, much. And they would box so well, you know, to do like um three. You could do the new design, the old design, the new design, and put them in a tall skinny box. And then, mm -hmm. or you can pair them too, just so, you know, like mm -hmm. Wilkin has this three set of like a really kind of um, like a pointed leaf, you know, yes. you can add like just little flower cookies with this leaf as, you know, like a few bite size. I always like to have bite sized cookies with such a big cookie. Right. I love it. Oh, you know what? That would be so pretty too, Mar, if you just made that little bit, the wing bit as your extra cookies. Yes. You definitely. So she just gave you another good hack like she did a couple weeks ago with the hexagons, how to half the hexagons to make your cookies stay in a, um, a certain in the spot box. in the box, right? 
Yes. All right. Well, Reeb, are we about to camera dance? Do you want to show we are. some stuff? We are. Are you going to just adjust your screen? Is that what I you're going to do? I'm just going to try to move this over and then we'll camera dance and maybe you can tell them about the coffee again and your cookie school real quick and flash those. So, so if you're just joining us, um, we're on every Tuesday doing live cookie decorating and answering your questions. We work in royal icing primarily, but we touch all kinds of different things. And um, you guys can uh, sign up to my cookie school where I do kind of in-depth, really step-by-step um, -step tutorials. And uh, on coffee, it's the daily supplies and the templates and it's support for for the just the if you're to, if you appreciate it and you enjoy it and you'd like to replicate something that we teach everything there is is to make your life easier and help us continue to do the live streams yeah i have to tell you i'm so addicted to live streaming with you guys now i absolutely love it <laughs> well it's really um the the way of right like i mean it's mm -hmm. gone i mean it's been like a pandemic lifesaver really <laughs> right yes it's been fantastic oh, so if you're interested it. in the coffee the link is at the bottom there amy it, what about your class did that pass that class with your hot air balloon uh, oh, no, I, that's on there somewhere. That's May 16th. It's a Sunday night, and that's going to be an entire day of, um, it's like virtual sharing. With, it's the San Antonio. I, so make sure you follow Amy so that you yes. can be up on what's going on with her and when she's going to be. Um, Did I leave the picture up, Mar, of the, of the balloon? I think I took it off, Amy, just because we had a bunch of stuff from Amber and oh, okay. Ken, and so the thing gets so filled up that I have to okay. kind of clear it out week after week, and that's why well, it's I'll, not there. We've got plenty of time, so that's a month away, so I'll pop that up for you guys next week so you can see that again, or there's pictures over on my store Facebook page for you, okay? Perfect. All right, so Are you, you ready? All, yep, I'm ready. You got all the comments now, right? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm on it. So quickly, I'll tell you, I added the um, this template today. I, I usually lay my royal icing transfer templates out in a six inch by six inch format. I laminate them. I use um, cellophane sleeves to cover them, pipe directly on them. And then I have a bigger bag that I slide them in to keep them in um, when I'm working on projects. And then I just pull my, my transfer out. I do this on heavy cardstock before laminating. So this is the one I put up there today. This is to make the tiny flower centers. I'm going to show you those, but we're not going to make those today, but I added this template to the coffee site. And then also today, look, it's my first one. You guys, this is the first supply list that I got together for you and, um, all kinds of live links. Everything's on there for you. Um, I will tell you, I did link everything to Amazon for you in case you're still not getting out of your houses, but please look through the list because you may already have some things like the airbrush colors and the gel colors. You don't need those exact ones. If you have a yellow, a pale green, um, you can just use what you have. And then also, um, you know, like the little non parels I linked on there for you. If you're comfortable getting out, Michaels has those little bags of the white and the yellow we're going to use today for a dollar a piece. So they're more expensive on Amazon. So just look through the list, see what you already have, and then shop around because sometimes your cake shops and uh, the Michaels the and Walmart don't have it cheaper, you know? And the bulk stores have <laughs> yes. affordable stuff. I just want to answer Bobby. So Bobby, you're okay. asking me about my food safe silhouette, silhouette mat. Mm -hmm. Go in last week's supply list. That's that's a free download on uh, on coffee. And the link to the supplier is in that sheet. I put it there. Okay. Let's see if I have this the best way. Can you see I had to make myself a stand today because I'm not at the store. So my computer's up on a little stand. <laughs> we make do. We're finagling. That's right. That's right. So these are the cookies I'm going to show you how to make today. And I'm showing you on hexagons just to give you some ideas to get ready for Mother's Day. Because oh. the majority of this cookie can be done ahead of time. So we're going to talk through this cookie, but just know you can do this in any color scheme you want. I kept mine very simple. We're using white and a really pale yellow um, royal icing. 
And then for airbrush colors, we needed the yellow and uh, to do the little flowers in the wafer paper, and we needed green to make the leaves. And we're going to talk about why I picked these particular stamps. I'm going to show them to you real quick before we start. Um, these are actually leaf stamps. But if you Google flowers, when you want to make flowers, if you Google them and actually start taking a look at photographs of real flowers, do you see this leaf? Let me see if I can turn it. There you go. So that's actually um, an oak leaf. But look how perfect it makes a daisy, a daisy leaf right by just sinking a certain amount of it in underneath the petals of the cookie so on your list today i feel like these we'll use these a lot i'll definitely be using them as we head towards fall so investment wise if you do purchase these you know know we'll be using them again and these are generally five to seven dollars a piece and just go through the sanitation process when you start with these but those are live linked on that list the other thing, um, I don't normally get these great big punches. This is not ones I normally get, but this one is great oh. because it does two sizes of petals and it does a center if you don't want to make the um, little centers that I'm about to show you how to make. Yeah, so this is nice. You've got two sizes built in. So if you figure in the cost of actually having three separate punches to make this, this is a good value. Also, um, I don't think Hobby Lobby's doing that single item 40% off coupon anymore. I think they're just rotating through certain things when things go on sale, but Michael's still does. And that is a Fiskar stamp from Michael's. So if you watch for that, you can get a deal on that. And then this is just the Daisy Punch. Mar, is this upright on your screen? Can you well, read that? Uh, yes, it is, but there's okay. no upright, right? It's a flower. Oh, no, I meant for the one inch. <laughs> I just wanted to make yes. sure I had to turn. So if they go back, this is a daisy cutter. I love this. I'm going to show you how to sculpt this a little bit when you're working with it. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I do have a link on there for you today for the wafer paper. Wafer paper has gone up a lot in the last year, but the pack that I linked for you today is actually the pack that I buy and it has over a hundred sheets in it. It lasts quite a long time, but you will need to remember um, to keep this in an airtight container. I did find that when I was just leaving it loose, that it was drying out too fast for me. So then I was having to definitely use paper potion all the time to re-soften it. But if I leave it in an air airtight container, this, this is a nice flex, uh, flexible piece. And it's been in the container for several months. I mean, not- Oh, yeah, was, me too. Me too. Yeah, I, yeah the, the yeah, airtight container. I actually use a cupcake holder. Okay, that's perfect. I've got mine in a Rubbermaid, one of those um, airtight Rubbermaid ones. I just leave it in there and it's the only thing in there. I don't want it to absorb an odor or a flavor. That's why it's in there by itself. And then um, I'm not going to put gloves on, but you can see I had an um, airbrush teal color explode yesterday for something I was working on. So when Mar said she was doing peacocks, I did a couple of experiments. So I'm just going to show you something that's coming. It's not what we're doing today. But these are made with rice paper, and I'm going to be using them on the peacock cupcakes. It's completely edible. Even the glitter is food safe. There's specialty sugars on there. There's um, bakery bling on there. Let me just lift them a little bit for you. So you see? But this is um, what you use to make spring rolls. So it's completely edible if somebody wants to eat it. I mean, if a kid gets a hold of it, it's not going to hurt them. But it may, you can make these beautiful sculpted pieces. Um, the reason I did this is I'm, I'm going to be doing peacock feathers with this. So that's what I was or originally playing around with for today. Um, but then I decided this is not necessarily a good thing for a cookie that someone's going to consume because it's not soft like wafer paper. This is very stiff. It's really to make like sales and things instead of using ice malt on your cakes. So it's yeah. a great decorative tool if you want to make a 3D feature cookie. So when I was thinking the peacock, I was thinking if you made a 3D and you wanted to add all of these bits and pieces to one cookie just for show, this is a great um, food safe medium to work with. It's very sturdy. It's You can get it very decorative. Then I had seen this really great video, Mar, where they took wafer paper and they used molds and they put the wafer paper into the molds and then spritzed it and used the top press. And look at the detail you can get on the wafer paper. So are those silicone? Mm -hmm. um, yep, I'm going to show them to you. They're right here. And then, and this is just a little feather mold, a little peacock feather mold. 
the um i'll show you the this one was in a, a mold that has an edge and you can see it caused the feather to kind of split in that one this one is just on this this feather right here was the easiest one to make so i'll show you the difference in those those are not on the supply list because we're not doing those today but it was one of those um things i was playing around with it went along with what mar was doing this one is the easiest one this mold is a two-piece and this layer actually fits over, but because it doesn't have a border that it's pressing into, it allowed the feather to, um, it didn't need to expand as much. So I was able to just gently do an imprint. It gave me the nicest feather, but these were the other ones. Um, I use these for fondant and modeling chocolate to do cakes and cupcake toppers. And so you see, you just push that bit in there. Same thing with this one. Uh, I don't know where the little piece has gotten to, but you basically cut the wafer paper to match, put the top on, you know, spritz it, put the top on, press it. So something I'll be playing with going forward with the wafer paper, just in case you decide to buy that big pack, it is something that'll be real useful. So, and then, so oh, let's look, in. Amy, I'm just going to interrupt you because the comments like move, you know? So when you're filling an order, do you individually wrap the cookies? Um, are we talking about these? Like it says here, when filling a cookie order, do you do you um, do the cookies have to be sealed separate bags, or do you just put them in a box? Or a uh, it depends. Yeah. It depends on what the customer is asking for. The, these cookies, I am putting these together to be a design for Mother's Day, so it's going to fit in a certain size box. So within the box, it'll be one large bag in the box, so it's food safe. I'll slide all the cookies in, heat seal it on the one end, then the clear top of the box will go on. And that's what I'll do for these. That doesn't work if you're going to do buttercream icing on cookies for Mother's Day. You can't, even if it crusts, if you slide that into a bag and the bag is not loose enough, it's gonna damage your cookies. So um, what I've seen people do is line their boxes with saran wrap or a press and seal, put the cookies in, then they um, put a layer over the top where it's not touching the cookies. So it has to be a taller box than what the cookies are and then put the lid on and then they seal the whole box to keep the cookies fresh. So I, I don't personally like to do that because I don't think the packaging ends up looking super nice that way, but there are plenty of food safe bags that are large enough to slide a set of these into, like let's say in your box, you wanted to do a set like this and you wanted to put two half hexagons here to finish filling your set. There are um, bags that are large enough. You could put each of the cookies into that in the box, like right when you're working and then heat seal the side. So that is hard stock under them. Um, I don't think you would need to, but if I was going to put something under them, I'd put one of the food safe cake boards and mm -hmm. I do have those cut. I just usually buy the um, like nine by 13s and cut them in half. They're pretty cheap on Amazon as well. If I need something to have support, but mm -hmm. typically what I do to keep the cost down is I just work right into the final box. So I open my bag, it's in the box, and then I'm sliding cookies in. I heat seal, lid goes on, and that box moves right down the line. Now, if someone wants these individually heat sealed, I do feel like these particular cookies, these would be okay. It's not, it's not gonna, the wafer paper is not going to be too fragile if you do want to individually heat seal these. But that's something we're going to talk about when we start placing the leaves. I'll show you. Um, because you see this one, how I made the leaves more upturned. So they, they're further away from the cookie. So wafer paper is, and it sticks out a little on the edge. I was getting a little artsy there with it just to see what it would look like. Um, but wafer paper is something that over time it's going to dry out. So it's going to become yes. more brittle. So you have yes. to think about that. Like this cookie, can you see that the leaves, when I did this one, they're pretty much all flat to the cookie. Yes. So there's yes. not going to be any pressure. But then let me show you the last one I did where I did some wet on wet technique and made a, a background. And then, but the leaves are much higher and they stick out much further. I'm going into a box with these as a set and I'm probably going to do a pink, a blue and a yellow set. Um, keeping the color scheme simple, like so same cookies, but off from three different color schemes for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to think about how you're packaging them. It's one of those things I always tell you guys start packaging work backwards because it doesn't do any good to spend all the time to make these beautiful creations and then it looks junky if you don't package it properly you don't want to do that right that's that doesn't make your your business look good or your product look good so always be thinking along those lines too and the other thing that's going to be super super helpful for new cookiers 
is start looking at your packaging to where as you move from season to season, you can actually use the same packaging. So you don't have to use up 100 boxes your first order out, right? So start planning each of your holidays to use all the same packaging, like a single box, a two cup, uh, a two cookie box, a, a platter set, something like that, but be able to reuse all your packaging. All right, so we're gonna pop back to this. When you print out that template today, what I typically do is lay a piece of, I'm gonna pop these off because we're not gonna make these today. We're gonna jump right to assembling the cookies. But this would be laminated so that I would not risk piping right on it because I'm known to do that. And then I have to reprint my template, right? Because I can't use that because it's on regular paper. So I laminate it. I slide it into the bag. I have all that prepped before I ever start because when I start, I'm going really fast. And what I normally do on this template is I skip every other, I do every other one so that I have plenty of room, every other circle. So I have plenty of room to come back and add the beads because you can see how much these expand, um, how wide they become once you add the beads to them. Can you guys see that okay? So when I'm piping, what I do is I just pipe right on the sheet. I'm using my circle for a guideline. And you know, you don't have to go do every other one. Some of these I made a little bigger because I knew I was gonna try that bigger daisy leaf. So just space them out, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I do find that this is super handy. Let me show you these real quick, just so I can move them out of the way. This is my little um, white nonpareils. Yes, yeah, Sarah, it's a good deal, isn't it? And these are my yellow. These both came from Michael's in the dollar bags. But I will tell you, um, if you use that 40% off coupon at um, Michael's and watch for a coupon at Hobby Lobby, they sell these in a, the white in a huge bag. If you don't want to buy all the different colors where it's already done for you, you can color these. Um, I especially love to use these um, and move them around in the Truly Mad Plastic Gold. I really like little gold nonpareils, so that's I do those in a little Ziploc. But this is also a super handy item. I think I put the dark blue one on your supply list because it was a little bit cheaper on Amazon than um, this one that I got in the store. But these bead return trays are fantastic. So you just, you know, you set your parchment, your template in here, which the six by six fits in the bottom of this. If you want to put your parchment on, um, pipe your little dots, and then you just pour your sprinkles over. And then with having this funnel return, you can send it right back to the container. So you're not wasting anything. So I think, um, and also I'm using the cordless, cordless airbrush gun that Marlon suggested. She actually got me started airbrushing about a year ago. So this is the cordless black. It's just a road tech. The thing I'd tell you about this on all of our supply lists, get the one with the silver. Um, what is this? The silver well, it's called a well, right, Mark? Get the silver one, because if you purchase the black, you won't be able to tell how much color you have in there. And it only takes a drop or two of color. So as I'm prepping, I've already just, just think along with me for this. So I knew that I was doing yellow daisy flowers and white daisy flowers. So I wanted the opposite for the centers. So you can see what I mean here. So the yellow daisies have a white center and the white daisies have a yellow. So I had a little, my little list going and I went ahead and made a bunch of the centers ahead of time. So these are all royal icing. When they're dry, can you see how easy they pop off? I'm barely touching them. So this is something I can, Mother's Day is not till May, it's the middle of April. I can make hundreds of these, they're done and they're ready to go. It's not a midnight hour thing where I'm waiting in stages for these things to dry on the cookie. Oh my gosh, yes. The thing I is, you know, it's so much more pleasant if you do it in steps. Yes, you and you can say, do, Yeah. what I found with doing that, because um, hopefully you guys learn from each of the holidays as you go through the holidays and you're moving forward, Hopefully you're learning that there's things you could have done ahead of time and you're thinking, oh, I could have made more cookies or sold more cookies if I had done X, Y, and Z ahead of time, right? So if I had all my bows made and all my packaging cards and I had all my royal icing transfers, then you're literally able to maximize your time for just icing the cookie and doing the royal icing decoration and then popping your pieces on. So even this, you guys, you can do this way ahead of time. I'm going to pull this over. This is all the little pieces that I made with the um, punches. I almost said stamps, but I meant punches. So I have two sizes of my leaves. And all I did for this was I took my wafer paper and these are eight by 10 sheets of wafer paper. And I do a whole sheet at a time. I usually put a huge piece of foil 
or parchment paper on the roll. I put a huge, huge piece down to try to keep my mist all in one area so it doesn't go all over because we don't want to sneeze rainbows, right? So I do one whole side, I lightly building up my color, never more than two passes because you don't want the paper to get too damp. And then because I don't want to take the chance of being in a hurry and something getting flipped over when I'm adding it to the cookie, I flip mine over immediately and light dust the second side. Once the front side is dry, I leave it on a paper towel. I let it dry. I spray the whole sheet so that it stays as flat as possible. And I know that I need yellow and I need green. So I did all of that ahead of time. And then also because I'm doing the white, I'm just punching that straight out of wafer paper. So this is with all the punches I used today. I have two sizes, the little tiny size of my leaf the large leaf, I have yellow daisies, I have white daisies, I have two sizes of petals, but this is literally just two sheets of wafer paper to make all of this that's here. And this is easily gonna do about a hundred cookies. So it's not a lot of expense to get a big bang. Exactly, and the thing is you can buy those already made, but you're gonna pay just like Royal Icing yes. Transfers, you can buy, for, buy them ready made, but it's so expensive oh. and you're your profits out the window so yeah so if you just get organized i know i say this all the time packaging backwards and organization you have to make a list have your supplies there you don't want to be running all over town or ordering on amazon at the last minute so it is important to be slightly ahead of your holiday but now we're actually going to start so you've basically just walked through all of the prep work and planning right on how to do this set my cookies are baked and watch how fast this comes together so it's the best I, part when it, when everything's ready, then it's just so satisfying, right? Because right? like, it's so fast, you know, you exactly. just don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, I, in all the older videos, we have how the bags are trimmed, but what also plan, do a color sketch for yourself, right? Because mm. I don't want to do white daisies on white icing. And I wanted to keep my colors to a minimum. So I have no more than three colors in the project, but my third color is added with an airbrush item which really sped up my processing time. I'm not waiting for multiple things to dry. When the, when I put the wafer paper pieces onto this cookie, the cookie's going to be done. It just will then have to set up and you'll be done. So let's let's start with that for now. The other thing is you guys, you can play with the I don't know if I kept it or not, but you can take your wafer paper and your punch. Let me show you something real quick that helps me if if the planning becomes a lot for you. I'll just usually take a piece of wafer paper like this. Am I on camera here? Uh, you're and a bit low. I just kind of score it with my um, with my scribe just to get a little line in it. If, if you are very, very visual and you're just not sure about designing cookies, I basically just scored my wafer paper. Um, you could do this with cardstock, but I do it with wafer paper because you can actually use it on the cookie. If you're just really scared about doing this, Oh, you're doing your bright eyes. I'm not sure what you mean. Your hands being on fire. Uh, maybe the piping. So, I guys, I took my. Or is it? Is I it because your hands are covered in red airbrush? Oh, I have teal all over me. A can exploded on me yesterday when I was making those sales. Um, it dries incredibly fast, Cynthia. If you do a light pass, you don't want to soak it. Right. It dries almost instantly. Right, like I did one coat, it was dry. I went back and did a second very fine coat. I was able to wait 10 seconds, flip it over. I did the back, I set it to the side, did my second color, and then I started immediately punching out my pieces, like super fast. So if you wanna play with this a little bit for design, just, you know, this is your cookie. Maybe take your punch and just decide, you know, where you want these, where you want them to be on the cookie, right? To give you an idea. You don't have to do anything with this. It's just something you can use and start figuring out how you want to do it. So this was something um, for be when I first started that I would do with my punches for two reasons, to make sure that they were sized appropriately to the cookie before I started punching all of this out. I usually just did it with the cookie cutter. The cookies weren't, cookies weren't even baked yet. And then I would just say, okay, well, I know I'm going to do a three here. And then I know on this cookie, I'm just going to do two. But this kind of gave me a guide. And if I wanted to, I could go back. And I could do a light airbrushing just to just to play with it. So there's a lot of ways to start spacing things. All right, so let's dive in on a cookie and let me show you how fast this goes because um, Easter really kind of um, 
Easter kind of kicked my butt this year. I, I was as prepped as I could possibly be, but I feel like I still took a few too many orders. It resulted in a few very, very late nights and one all nighter. Um, but you know, you learn and you start making notes from season to season on how much you can actually get through your ovens and how quickly you can start. So I think you guys basically already know how to flood. I'm not going to explain all of that. I am going to cut this hole just a little bit bigger though. Um, it's coming out about the size of a one point tip and I need it to be just a little bit, a little bit bigger. So always take time to make adjustments. It's like getting your icing right. It's really important your icing is right. Just if your icing's not right, stop and fix it. So I'm basically just giving myself a nice outline. And I use the same consistency. Um, it's about a 15 to 20 second consistency for the icing and the flood. Camille is like, loving your cookies, Amy. They do like them? Yes. So Bright Eyes mm -hmm. is saying about um, her hand was sore and, and you struggle with, um, you know, you've yes. been decorating for many years and you have pain. Mm -hmm. What's your tip for that? Smaller, smaller bags. I, the bags are so cheap. I don't mind using these smaller bags. This is, um, uh, I, you know, I didn't put this on the list, but this is a bees baked art. It has a little bit of texture to it, which I prefer for holding. Also, if you're going to be doing video shooting, this bag doesn't make a lot of noise when you're on camera with it. So because your camera's right up in, you know, there's there's volume right up in the webcams. Um, so you don't want that crinkling in there all the time. The other thing is, if you're going to use a bigger bag, work further down on your bag for holding it. Right. So that the weight is hanging over, but you're only pushing icing from here to here. That'll help you guys a ton. Now, this is a little bit thicker than I would like it to be. It just didn't, it didn't break down as much. I bagged it last night. It didn't break down as much as it normally does. So we're gonna have to shake this one. But if your flood is just right, you won't even have to do that. It, it'll just sink into your corner. So this is one of those cases where if I was gonna be doing a ton of these cookies, I would just stop right now and thin this out a little bit because it's just a little thick. But a quick shake should get us there faster. And if I have to, I'll use the scribe and move it around a little bit. Do you think this is a project where you could do some dipping, uh, as Sarah's asking? Oh, yeah, I think you totally could do dipping. I personally don't do it because um, I, I don't like to dip because I don't like all that on my hands. And even when I wear gloves, I have trouble with dipping. But I have a friend that dips cookies regular. She never gets anything on her hands. I mean, she's just in there out and it's perfect. You know, I, I just have not mastered that yet, but a marble background with this cookie would be so pretty. I think it would be beautiful. All right, so we're almost smooth. Now, this is super handy. You can find something else to work on, but I'm gonna be working on the tip of an airbrush bottle. I'm gonna show you a handy little tip if you want to get your flowers um, bent before, but not broken. We wanna bend the leaves, but not break them. Now, the other thing I did, you guys, you remember that little template I just made? The other thing it's handy for is to have it laying on a cookie above the cookie that you're actually working on. Okay. And let me show you a little trick with this. We're going to white background. We're going to be adding yellow daisies. I'm just purging the tip of the yellow bag to the side. I'm going to put them roughly in the places where these are, but I want a multi-level flower with only using one set of wafer paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe a background. I'm not going to touch this after I pipe it. I just want that nice little color behind the leaves of what I'm about to add. So right, I'm just going to do that one little star. This will sink down in the icing. And when you add the wafer paper flower on top, and I'm just using my template that's right there like a guide so that I know where to place my flowers. And it's going to be on here for a couple seconds before we start to add the wafer paper flowers. So this is my little bottle. I prefer these. This is an airbrush bottle. The tip on this is just the perfect size for doing these one inch. And I have one of my um, wafer paper daisies. It's been painted on both sides. It's entirely up to you whether you want to put the textured side up or down. I like to see the textured side. So in my hand, it's upright. I take the tip of this bottle and put it right in the center, flip it over. Let me try to do all this on camera for you. And you can do this ahead of time. 
Um, but it's it's really better to do it right when you're putting it on the cookie so that um, you don't risk breaking these. But do you see how I just formed that to the top? So then I'm going to just take it. I'm, I'm going to use my fingers. You can use tweezers. I just pop it right into the center. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give it a little nudge. And what's going to happen, the moisture is going to start to transfer to the petals. And then you can start positioning the petals if you want to spend the time to do that. I didn't find that it made that much difference. So I just popped it in and let it start to soften. I immediately come back. I add the same color of icing into the center because I don't want to see it right when it's done, when it's coming out. And now mm -hmm. I'm going to pop in the little pieces I made ahead of time. Uh, you can do it with tweezers. I didn't find that you needed it. You can move really fast this way. And I'm just going to keep going. Just, just watch what I'm doing. Texture size down on top of this. If you guys have a better way to do this, do that. This just works great for me. I'm going to pop that in there. I'm going to tuck it down in. Now, this also, you guys, would be beautiful on a plaque-shaped cookie if you really don't want to use the hexagon. Um, I'm definitely using the hexagon because I like how it looks presentation-wise. But you certainly could do this on a plaque cookie, and um, it would look great. And you could then add, um, you could pipe some green stems and add some additional leaves. So I'm just barely touching this in. You can see what's happening here. The leaves are taking on some moisture. And you see how that's starting to like soak in. But we still have that uplifted bit. So let's go ahead and add our two centers really quick. And I just purge the tip of the bag off to the side, adding just a tiny bit of royal icing. I'm going to grab two more of my little centers, which I did with the icing, uh, white icing and the white nonpareils. I'm going to pop that in. I'm just going to give them a little tap with the scribe. All right, let me show you this really quickly, and then we're going to add our leaves. So you have a multi-dimensional flower, but you only have one layer of wafer paper added to get that. The next thing I'm going to do that I'm going to experiment with is I'm going to come back when this cookie is dry and I'm going to do that really cool outlining around that bottom layer of the flower and see if that adds anything to it or if it takes away from the design. And I worked. I on was looking at you and I was thinking that if you cut the flower out of a piece of cardstock, you could air, like let the cookie dry, mm -hmm. airbrush your little flower, and then stick your wafer paper on top of your airbrush silhouette, like that I, you do. I did that initially, but then you can't do the leaves the way I'm about to do the leaves. Ah. So that's why I came back to this, but you definitely can do that. And you could just airbrush your leaves on there too if you did a stencil. Yeah. But you see the little leaf. This is the baby. Also um, painted on both sides. Again, I'm sorry for my airbrush hands. It just absolutely exploded on me. And I'm going in at an angle because I really wanted to get this cool. I just want this extra level of detail. And because all the prep work is done, this cookie's going so fast. So I'm putting, uh, I work in threes around my flower. So I've got two baby petals here. I'm coming it in an angle into that icing and I'm putting the leaf up. So you make the decision if you're bagging or boxing, you may not want the leaves up this far. Let me turn that mm -hmm. so you can see. In which case, if you don't want them up this far, this is how easy it is. You just start to pull it down to the icing and the icing will kind of suck the leaf down so mm -hmm. they're not up as far. And then if you find you did your leaf a little too far away from the flower, just add another leaf in there. Mm -hmm. See how easy that is. You well, you know, what I'm watching you, Amy. For those of you that are watching that are bakers and maybe you have dear friends and family that, that aren't so inclined, you know, this is a great project that you could have them over, have everything ready and say, come mm -hmm. on, guys, we're going to do a decorating day. And they'll be like, oh, well, I'm no good. And, you know, all this. And you say, no, right. no, you have everything ready. And then you have all this ready. And the most novice person could enjoy this process, right? I and think so. And the wafer paper is so thin, it's completely edible. Yes. But look at this beautiful cookie that we already have, right? Can you see that? Beautiful. Now, I'm going to stay on just this one cookie because we're already 15 over. But I want to show you something else you can do if you get so inclined. I did the base layer with that crisscross yellow to give me another level. I did mm -hmm. one layer with my petals. But watch this little trick, which I discovered very late last night. 
I just took one of these little guys painted and I cut it into twos. Mm. And um, this is where your cookie starts taking more time. So you've got to charge more. So this may not be something you want to do. But if it's for your mom or your family and you want to put the extra in, look how easy it is to make your flower a little bigger or to fill a yeah, hole. More dimensional, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And it's so pretty on the cookie. Let me finish this whole this whole flower right here and then I'll lift it up for you. Um, and as I mentioned, when you're airbrushing your sheet, you don't have to do like one, one all like you can kind of do like a bit of a blush of orange and so that your flowers yes. are a little bit, you know, like. Um, I want to try this with the punch that is the um, hydrangea petal. And I want to do it with the purples and blues that I yes, have yes. one that sails with. I thought that would be a beautiful cookie too. Yes. But just super easy, guys. Look how, how easy this was. And I'm just tipping it in that icing. This is actually a technique I used last summer um, when I was doing some mermaid cookies for somebody. Mm -hmm. And we were able to make these really pretty feature cookies for uh, Wendy's sister's baby shower. Well, I think that this type of a flower is a little bit easier on the teeth than a mm -hmm. super big icing flower, right? Oh, ab absolutely. And kids will love this project if you have everything prepped. This is great. You saw that I've just got two colors of icing that I'm using. And then I have two colors of airbrush color. And look at how much dimension we have here. Oh so, my gosh, you could have the kids make the gift for grandma or yes. have the kids over and make the gift for mom. This is yes. like really a kid friendly, nice little project. And, um, and I think that super, what's, what's great about these types of projects is they can feel good at the end, right? Because it almost surely will turn out. So they'll feel, you know, and you could do the dipping with the kids because mm -hmm. the piping bag is tricky with the young kids, but they mm -hmm. don't care if they get icing all over their heads. <laughs> And yeah, and this would be gorgeous if it was a marbled background. So if you did the green, the yellow, and the white in the background, this is also another one where you could come back right now and add some green to add the leaf and then do that nice black outlining that's so popular. You can get a whole nother level going there. But yeah. this is beautiful when it's, let me just show you the set all put together so you can get an idea of what you can accomplish. And of course, you know, the hexagon is is a fabulous item to work with because you can do so much with it so then this isn't so much about the shape it's more about the design on the cookie right but it's a nice size cookie that one person would actually eat it's not a big five or six inch cookie that somebody might be like oh i'm not going to pick that up this is a nice size and if you take your hexagon cut it in half and finish filling in your bits when this is in the box, it's not going to move around. So you're not going to need to worry about any kind of damage. You saw how fast that cookie was to do and how detailed it came out. And then taking a look at this, this should give you some ideas like the marble dipping is one idea. Also this wet on wet and doing the streaks where we're combining the colors. Um, and the other thing, I'm looking at your cookies, my brain's exploding. You could also <laughs> like pearl the sheets so that oh, they're yeah. tiny, right? Yes. Yeah, I don't. Do I have that to show you? Because I did that yesterday for something else. Let me see if I have any made that are already glittered. Because well, I did. You, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Amy. That was wonderful. Your cookies are very, very pretty. I think that this is a project that I love the idea of being able to come together Mm -hmm. When it hurts so, so much, you know, like these little projects just so. so these are, you can see perfect. that, right, Mar? These have diamond dust, which I just hit it with diamond dust right when it came after the first pass of the airbrush or the second pass of the airbrush. And it's stuck perfectly. So it has a nice shimmer to it. Um, but I landed on the yellow because in my brain, I kept thinking yellow and it was because of the hexagon and it being a B shape. So I'm sure that's why I landed on yellow yesterday, but I think this would be beautiful in pink or purple, blue, a couple of shades of green. So much you could do with this. So you can really make it your own. Cutter is just one that you get for your, like, you know, they're like the, the, the building blocks to your collection. You know, you want to get a hexagon, a candy corn, yes. a, you know, a nice plaque. Mm -hmm. These are the shapes that really, um, you can make cookies for Father's Day on there. You can make cookies for, you put dinosaurs for your three-year-old. Right. And you can do anything on there. 
Yeah, there, there's some, um, what do you, do you feel like you have more than six that are your regular set that you always fall back on when you need something? Um, well, because of the nature of what I do, right? It's like a little bit different than if I was like, you know, like you working and selling, do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yes. I'm always trying to be like, oh, I gotta be, you know, like, I'm yes. like, gonna get them to look at it, you know? Just so like I looked at my cookie <laughs> wall because I was like, I wonder how many of these I really have. And I do have this little area. I think I told you my husband um, put up a sheet of four by eight pegboard for me. So I have all my cookie cutters organized. So in the lower right corner, because I'm very, sh I'm not very short, but I am a little bit height challenged. So <laughs> I, and my work area has to start so much above how tall my stainless steel counters are. So I have this corner in the lower right, which I hadn't even realized I did it. But when I went to bake these, I was like, I went right to that corner and I realized in that corner, there's a, there's a three and a half inch square. There's a three and a half inch circle. My hexagon is there. There's a traditional hard scalloped heart. There's my um, candy corn is there. So there, there was oh, yeah. about 10 of them that like, if I need to make something and I want it to be more about the design than necessarily the cookie shape, or I want to do something like this where I can make a really fancy set, but I don't want it to be about doing all the crevices and grooves on a highly detailed outline. I, I actually have built a little set over there and didn't even realize it because I'm so um, organized when I put them back. Yes. But there's these ones that keep drifting to that corner. So they're, I, I found they're, myself they're, doing they're it. Rising to the top of the... Yeah. Um, so uh, Ashley today, Amy only use punches, but if you want to watch, uh, with the silhouette, I use the silhouette mm -hmm. on Friday and here are the cookies that I made. These are cut with a silhouette. And Mar, um, was it, was it the week before with me or the, or the Friday where you also did the silhouette and you used the wafer paper and you did stamping after you airbrushed and then stamped with the pansies? That's also in yeah, one of the weeks. A different one. Those were hand cut. I didn't mm -hmm. uh, that, like I uh, airbrushed them, but I didn't um, like I cut them with scissors because right. like I had exactly the shape, so I knew. Right. You know? right. And the the this one here with the blossoms, it was also about mass production, right? Being able to make a yes. lot in a short this amount is, of time. This is definitely to get you thinking about the store. If you're going to be doing Mother's Day offerings. You definitely want to start thinking about um, how you're going to do that so that you can use your time more effectively so that you can actually make more cookies closer to the date. So you don't have to worry about freezing and all of that. You just have your number. You know what you've got to bake. You have your icing made ahead of time. You've got all your bits and bobs made ahead of time. And then you're just ready to put them together the two days before pickup. Right. You can do hundreds of cookies this way if you've done all the prep work. Uh, I just want to answer Ashley here. Ashley, uh, I don't know that there's wafer paper that would be too thick for a, a cricket to cut. You just maybe need to adjust your blade, like make right. it, you know, that your material is thicker than what you were using. Like I did copy paper. Maybe you need to do cardstock, like adjust it, play right. with it. What happened though, I'm going to tell you guys, full disclosure, I cut mine and it wasn't going through. So I went a little bit deeper than the copy paper and I actually cut my food safe mat i cut my mat and the mat the way that they fabricated the mat it's exactly like at school the way they laminate a sheet so when the mm -hmm. plastic got cut it fell off and i was left with the template like the the ruler thing exposed paper and so to wash it now water's getting in there you know right so you maybe want to look at like a um like a like a placemat you know like mm -hmm. a like a kitchen placemat type thing. Right. I, you know, it's so fast with the punches too, that if you haven't, if, if you're not, if you don't have a highly detailed project that you set yeah. up specifically to print and cut, like some of the machines do, then. But I like that I was able to do 20 yeah. in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I liked, you know. I, anyway. I, and I adored the pansy one that you did, adding that extra detail by using the wafer paper to that pansy flower. That was gorgeous. You can check out all of our previous lives, like I said at the beginning. And if uh, you're late to the party today, just play the, the replay to see what, uh, what, what here I, my camera died because I forgot to turn it off. But here's today's cookie for me. So pretty. And Amy's, you can see right there. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. 
And um, thank you for all week, the support. My, my phone's been lighting up. Has Do you get a ding when yours lights up? Um, well, I, I, I don't have the phone on because I find it a little bit like, I, I you know, I'm already attention a little bit, you know, my brain. So yeah. I, I turn it off. Mine, mine's too far away to grab it, but it has one of those little lights that flickers and I've been seeing the light. So I know you guys are donating. Thanks so much. Thank really you everyone. It. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us on Friday. I got a little preview of what hands making. Oh, what is it? Cool. So maybe you want to join us on Friday. Are she, you on uh, Friday too? Are you making something? Yeah, I'm on Friday. Amber is manning the controls. So I have to dig through my cookies. Not sure. I got cookies baked all over the kitchen here. I'm going to see which one is going to be the lucky contender for the project on Friday. And That's uh, so much fun. I'm looking forward to Friday. It's going to be a busy week at the shop this week. So, oh, Friday, yeah, you're going to have a busy week. Yeah. Friday I don't know. It will be a highlight. You know, it's good when the, the shop is busy because you're making money, but it's also so much work, right? Yes, but I, I, full confession, I got my COVID shot. I shared that with Mar and it, um, I wasn't expecting the reaction I had to it. I definitely had a reaction. So it kind of, kind of set me back. And so I have some reschedules this week for stuff that I just couldn't do last yeah. week. So I'll get caught up though. Everything, everything will keep moving. Yeah, well, that's it. You have to adjust. So thanks yeah. everyone for joining us and we'll see you next Tuesday. And uh, we'll see you on Friday with Han and Amber. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.